What's up, y'all? This is Ox the Gardener, and we are back with another video. Another set of things to do, another project. And I'm in my backyard. I just renovated my little uh, succulent area back here. If we look and we lean forward, we can see my little uh, my shelves over here, some of my plants. I got plants up there. And, uh, well, what, why are we here? What are we going to do today? Today we are going to pot up some lithops. People have asked me some questions about the bare root lithops video. People have been watching the bare root lithops video and evidently people like seeing stuff about lithops. And I friggin love lithops or lithops. Never lithop or lithop. Ah. Uh, I, I friggin love these plants. Uh, if you see my videos and my shorts and stuff, I'm always singing to these stupid things and I'm planting them up and I'm enjoying them, I'm pollinating them and we're making seed. We're going to get some uh, seed germination areas going this, uh, this season and uh, we're going to do some fun stuff and we're expanding and growing our collection. We're having a lot of fun doing it. We're getting some really cool cultivars and some breeds and uh, we're growing them out and we're making them healthy guys and then hopefully we're gonna create a whole bunch more of them. Maybe share some of that love with the rest of the world or at least Southern California. So anyway, uh, this video, I'm going to pot up some lithops. How many lithops am I gonna pot up today? I'm gonna pot up 73 lithops. Yes, 73. I have 73 plants in front of me. I just counted them. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to go ahead and make you watch and uh, watch me pot up 73 of these in real time. But I am going to make a time lapse of me doing it, and we're going to see how that turns out. I think that's going to be kind of cool. Uh, if you watch watching my videos, you know that I like making these, and I like watching them, too. I love watching myself talk and say things and sing. <laughs> It's kind of a disease. Anyway, um, I think it's going to turn out really cool. And I'm going to get this done. And these guys in the ground, they've got some guys that are kind of getting a little dry and a little sad. And they need to grow some new roots out. And they need to be healthy boys. So, real quick, let's take a look here. And uh, let's see what we got. So, these boys down here, pardon my, my work area. So, we got some Brumfieldy eyes here. We got some Vericulosa Rose of Texas's right here. Yeah, make a little pink flower there. We have some uh, C188's. Uh, a nice potty bunch here from my buddy Hawk. And uh, another clump right there behind it. And I'm really stoked to have these. Um, here are some Rubro Brunias. Uh, I've had three of them that were kind of sad. One that's doing great and two others that were kind of sad. And now I have a lot more. I really love this uh, particular one. So I'm going to grow these out. These are kind of a reddish brownish with some amazing uh, patterns on them. I love the patterns that show up on these guys. Uh, yeah, we got some Brumfieldy eyes here. We got some little Brumfieldy eyes. Those are good looking boys. I like those. Uh, we got some embers. Yeah, we got a little batch of embers here. I have some embers now, but they're uh, seedlings. They're only about a year old, so they're only going to split. No flowers. And uh, I'm probably not going to see a lot of flowers from you guys, too. It's kind of getting late in the season for potted up plants to make flowers. But we're going to pot them anyway and get them going. We have a little group of Bella Kitties here. Yeah, some nice little Bellicetties. I can't be a Bellicetties. Uh, we got some, uh, I can't remember what these were, Hawk. What were these? Were these the Ana Rosas? No, I can't remember. Those aren't Jackson's Jades. Anyway, there's nice boys. Some good looking plants here. And uh, we got a little cluster here. Some. Uh, uh, Kikusekis, uh, Kosogayukis, uh, I can't remember the other, but, uh, these are the little chrysanthemum pattern guys, and I got a nice little batch of little boys here with a bunch of really cool, interesting patterns that hopefully will, uh, grow into some good looking plants and give me some nice, uh, offspring and a lot of variation, and we have this cool little bunch here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Now, I forget. I think these might have been pseudo truncatellas. I can't. They're kind of dry. But two of these guys are trying to put out a flower from inside the box being shipped from New York. But these are all uh, little trilobe, little, little freaky mutant guys. Now, these will typically grow out. And they'll split and go back to normal. But you know what? They've got a little uh, ability to freak out on me. So we're going to breed these. And I think these were some triple uh, triple Kikus. Triple Salicola. Triple Kikus. Yeah. So a cool little bunch of plants here we're going to pot up. So, uh, yeah. And you know what? We'll do one pot real time so I can talk about the stuff that I'm using. And uh, the rest of it, we'll do a little, a little freaky time lapse. Yeah, this is my little garden area. Oh, while while we're taking a little pause and looking, here's my this is my shady shelf. I got a bunch of little echeveria in here. Some propped out craptopedalum and some special guys. Uh, Lenophyllum guttatum right there is a really good looking plant. And uh, uh, this top shelf, some. Uh, some uh, Graptovaria, Graptopedal, there's a Titabon, variegated Titabons, there's a Vera Higgins over there, there's a uh, Paraguayancy in the back, and then we got some green ovias in here, enjoying the cooler weather in the season, some various other things going on, and there's the collection, there's the collection. Yeah, we'll take a look at that before, uh, before the end of the video, we'll take a look at that uh, and include it in this video, but yeah, I'm in my backyard. My little work area got tomatoes and berries and cabbages for the guinea pigs growing out so all right enough of that no one wants to see all that stuff here look at the lithops okay god you talk so much robert man okay i do talk a lot that's all right that's how i roll all right so those you saw the subjects now uh what am i going to use put it in well the primary thing we're going to use is this beautiful bag of glory this is little emerald thumbs mess M substrate it is uh a proprietary soil blend that consists of 41 variations of premium ingredients perfect for all succulents including mess M's, cacti and haworthia i love it it's a bunch of rocks in a bag and it's the cool rocks it's black rocks and uh, not black rocks and lava colored rocks and anything. It's, we got turpus in here, pumice, scoria, uh, I believe we have some black lava rock in here, zeolite, granite, uh, and it's in a, a wonderful consistency. Uh, we've got larger particles, a few bit of the larger particles, a lot of the medium, a fair bit of the fines, and it all works super well for my lithops, and I love using it, so that's why we can use it. Now, we're going to pot 73 lithops, and we're probably going to use uh, 11 to 14 pots. And so I don't have enough of this wonderful mess of substrate to fill all that. So, what do you use if you're not going to use some fancy snooty bag substrate? What are you going to use? Well, we're going to get some pumice. We're going to get a big bag of pumice. And this stuff is, uh, it's, it's white gold, it's magic. I put it in everything I grow. Uh, well, maybe not the tomatoes. I, I, I do admittedly use perlite for some of the vegetables. Um, but pumice, so we have this big bag of pumice. And uh, hold on, I think my son is. Yes, my baby. My sweet little girl needs some help with her play dough. I'm gonna help her, I'll be right back. All right, well, my little girl needs some help opening her Play-Doh, so that's that a duty. You gotta jump in and do that a duty. So, anyway, uh, I have the pumice, and then once I have the pumice, I sift it. Uh, this is a one quarter inch, this is a, like a Japanese sieve set. I got off of Amazon, it was not expensive. It comes with uh, one quarter inch, uh, eighth inch, and uh, fine mesh. And uh, I recommend you get one of these if you're going to grow lithos. Uh, if you're going to be serious about the hobby, get the right tools. You need this stuff. So I take 
uh, the pumice, and I mix my pumice for my mix. This is my final mix in here. This has been sieved out. Okay. What this is is uh, one part cocoa coir, uh, cocoa coir, coir, however you want to say it. One part of that. I used two parts of this new stuff that I found, and this is uh, it's called microbe lift planting media and I found it in the succulent area of one of the stores I go to and uh, what it is is calcined fuller's earth which is a type of clay and so it's kind of like a brown kitty litter and evidently it's got some beneficial microbes and they say it's not it won't break down in water it won't fall apart in water it seems to be as hard as pumice I mean I can break pumice apart with my fingernails if I push really hard the same with this stuff but uh, it seems to be a nice grid. It's just a smaller size. And uh, so I'm using one part coca coir, two parts of the calcine Fuller's Earth, or what other other thing. And then uh, I'm using seven parts pumice. So I throw all that together, and uh, that makes this mix here. And that makes this mix. And this comes out great and everything, but it's got a little bit of two large particles. So we want to be nice and uh, demonstrative here with our stuff. And so, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. Dunga, 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 dunga. Look at the pumice, pumice. Look at the pumice, pumice. Okay, so the way you sift stuff is you, you dump your stuff in the top of this and you shake it around and all the small stuff comes out of the bottom and the big stuff stays in the sieve and uh it's not it's not rocket surgery it's not brain science um and then you take your big stuff and you put it over here in your big stuff bin and then later you take a hammer to it and uh you make it small stuff so yeah so now that i've got this stuff this is going to be my bottom half this is what I'm going to use for the bottom half. You can use this for all half. This is actually probably one of the best looking little substrates I put together by myself. Uh, but yeah, I like to use Coca Coir uh, because it dries out and it's very spongy and uh, sucks up the moisture. This Fuller's Earth will also suck up some moisture as well, and this pumice will suck up some moisture. So that could be your grit. And uh, if we take a look. It's actually pretty close. No, oh, no, 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 here. Here, camera, look here. It's pretty close. What am I doing? Dumbass. Whatever. It's pretty close to the Messem stuff. It looks very similar. Uh, and so it's going to be perfect. It's going to work fine. Anyway. So we got our media. Now we got fertilizers here. I put in a few grains of Osmocote. Half of this stuff, right? Or two thirds of my base media, uh, whatever it's going to be, whether it's the MSM substrate or this stuff or combination thereof, two thirds full. I also have, uh, just so we know, these are a six centimeter square. They fit perfectly in the bottom of these awesome pots I got off Amazon. Um, what this stuff is, is. Uh, cheap air conditioning filter from Home Depot you can pay a few bucks and get like a few sheets of it and uh, it's uh, non-woven poly polyester and uh, it holds the fines in but lets the waters out and so I like that stuff so yeah one of those in the bottom of the pot and then we're gonna take our uh, media and we're uh, oh you know what I had it Fancy scooper. Hey, come back here. Come back to my face. Man, this this tracking camera is a blessing and a curse. I tell you that. Okay, so two thirds. Two thirds full. Two thirds full. And why two thirds full? Because then I like to do my little fertilization layer here. And so I'm going to take, uh, here, you know what? Let's just quit looking at my face. No one needs to look at that all the time. And let's look at something interesting, like what's actually going on. It's supposed to be educational, and my face is 
non-educational. I mean, I suppose there's some studies that could be done, but yeah, it's not has anything to do with plants. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. You, uh, you want to look some more? You want to look some more down there? Yeah, you know, not at him. Look down there. All right. Hey, look at that. There we are. All right, so we got our two thirds full, and then I'm gonna take my Osmo coat. And like I said, a few grains, try to get it around. Then I use a little garden line. And uh, this is for a little, little pH adjustment. You don't need a, a super uh, acidic environment for these guys. So a little garden lime. And then for a little root development, a little magic fairy dusting of bone meal. Oh, some bone meal. Wonderful. Quite lovely. All right. So, now that we've done that, we're going to take this glorious stuff. I love the way it looks so much. And so that is one of the main reasons why I started using this stuff was the way it looks. So we're going to take this little emerald foam goodness and we're going to fill the pot up. And so I have a lot of lith ups to get through today. And so I'm not going to be real cautious with uh, Filling stuff on the counter on my little work table I got here so I don't need these big old huge pieces in here so what are we gonna do first well we'll do uh, these wonderful variculosa rose of Texas all right and so now take the biggies from the top we can situation the biggies around I'm not gonna fill this all the way to the toppy top because I want to have a little bit of room because I'm gonna dig some holes in here so now what I'm gonna do now that I've done this right here I'm gonna go wet this down uh, yeah so let's do that real quick all right so get my little little water wand here and uh, That's it. I give it a nice little saturation. All right, let's take it back to the workbench and continue. All right, and we're back. And we have watered our media. <coughs> it's got some moisture in there now. Ready to go, ready to support these guys into the future. There's a dead mosquito. Poochaga. And we are going to pot them up. So what do we got here? These are our... Variculosa Rose of Texas, and uh, the Variculosa, uh, that species has a, an interesting uh, top where it's got uh, almost like little little red blood vessel dots, uh, little uh, reddish. This is a different Variculosa. This is the Rose of Texas, and they've all kind of got these little reddish dots in here. And when it's plumped up and really healthy, it, it looks pretty amazing. Uh, but the flowers on the Rose of Texas are specifically the pinkish flowers, which are the only ones typically uh, out there, except for maybe some mutants or whatever, crossbreeds. Um, the rest are purple or yellow or white. And so uh, these guys are kind of special. So we're going to plot these up. So uh, now we got to prep these guys for potting. We can't just throw them in there. Now, we could... And we could theoretically maybe have some success, but uh, let me show you my tools for potting lithops. One, I use a bonsai jack metal chopstick. I use these handy dandy little bent tweezers. And I use a very sharp pair of uh, uh, pruning floral shears and uh, make sure that I use a little uh, rubbing alcohol and clean them off well before I use them. Uh, they're very sharp and uh, these are important and here's why so we have this lithops here and uh, this stem is very woody and we've got these roots well this has been in a box for a week or two and so these roots are kind of dried out and they're kind of sad so uh, what you need to do when you get bare root lithops is you need to re-root them and the way we do that is by giving them a little trim 
and putting them into some moistened substrate and keeping that substrate moist for about a week. And that'll encourage those roots to grow on out. Now, uh, that big woody mess right there, now I see a little bit of white here. We need to trim this back until we see a little bit of the white pith in the center of the root. That's really important. So I'm gonna come in here and uh, take that out. Now, I see some right there already. Right in the center of the root is a little bit of white pith. So that looks pretty good. I might clean up these sides a little bit here, maybe expose a little more. And uh, don't worry about putting that in a moistened substrate. It, it wants that to get triggered to grow out. So that is one prepped lithop ready for potting. We need to do the same with every lithops here. I said lithop, didn't I? Oh, we got to do that with every lithops here to prepare them for potting. Now there's a nice little white chunk right in the bottom of that chunky root. That's good. Take that. All this side fuzz stuff that feels like it can just be pulled off, it can because it's dead and we don't care about it. You can get rid of it. It's really important we clean up this root and we expose that white little chunk of pith. Oh, I'm so pith. <laughs> okay, Mike. Um, we want to expose that so those roots have a place to grow up from. Now that looks pretty good. So now we got our three lithops here ready to go in this pot. Now I uh, have some pots that are multi-species and uh, they do just fine uh, as long as they're on the same cycle and they're not like an a Optica Rubra or Hair Eye that wants to be more moisturized and they do well. But my goal here is to have these little species specific pots so that's why I'm doing this. So I'm going to make uh, a little three places. I'm going to select three places. Now it's a big rock to hang out right near the top so I'll just kind of move that out of the way. If he's down below hidden that's fine but over here on top is a little too much and so kind of designate three places and now you want to make a little a little divot about the size of a lithops in your substrate and so I'm just gonna kind of make a little cone here and it's got a little nodule for the root a little nutch a little nutch for the root and we're gonna go ahead and open the hole up okay so now we got three holes now thing about moistening your substrate, not only does it keep your lithops uh, happy and start growing some roots out, it also makes it from collapsing. And so I'm not sitting here trying to fight and throw a bunch of powdery, rocky stuff at some lithops and hold them in place. I just make little three of the holes. And you can set these in however way you want, split however way you want, face them however way you want. Uh, turned like that, like that, like that, like that. It's all personal choice. Uh, lithops can be potted uh, pretty close to one another as well. You can put a fair number in one pot. You don't want to overdo it, but they don't mind being close to one another. Um, so that's it. I'm just putting little divots in here, and I'm shoving these guys into the divots. Okay, and now that I've got these divots in, there might be some voids down in there, so I'll just kind of take the top of my hand hold it over the top of that cut kind of well, just... tappy tappy and then I'll just kind of push the substrate around so you got one of your big rocks look now it's a feature it's a feature of this pot it, it lends character because it's got a big chunk of granite in the middle or whatever Whatever makes you smile. Doesn't matter. This is your pot, your lithops, your plants. You put them in. As long as you keep them healthy, I won't judge unless you grow some sad lithops because you can learn and fix that. Okay, so yeah, there you go. One pot of uh, Vericulosa Rose of Texas. Ready to go. And now notice that I planted these guys pretty snug down in there. These lithops that are bare rooted are going to be dried out. And uh, 
you know you're going to have some happiness when these guys start puffing out and they're going to start growing up over that soil and i've had monster pseudo truncatellas that i've gotten before that i've actually had to uh repot once they built out roots because they were so tall above the pot they put them completely flat and they just oh, like an elephant foot emerging from the substrate. Crazy. Okay, so that's how I did it. So we did uh, with the uh, the homemade substrate. We got the coca choir. And uh, so nine parts pumice or grit of your choice, but my, mainly pumice to one part organic sifted soil. I use coca choir. You can use sifted potting soil, sifted succulent soil. Um, any anything like that but you don't want any big chunks of bark or anything like that you want it sifted out really well um so it's just kind of like a powder you, you're trying to fill the voids in the substrate that's why you're doing that so anyway that's a little uh instructive again i mean i did this video a couple days or a couple of weeks a couple months i don't know how long ago it was but i did that other bare root pot up video people are watching and gleaning info from so Here's another one. So now, just for the hell of it, let's uh, shut up because there's enough info provided. If you have any other questions, please ask questions. And uh, I'm not one of those YouTubers who's really going to beg for your likes and subscribes. Um, but I did just bring it up. Anyway, moving quickly on, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in time-lapse mode. And I'm going to pot up... 73 well 70 lithops mostly little tiny guys but a couple clumpy guys and some normal mature size guys and uh sit back watch uh maybe i'll put on a little music some grateful dead because that is my jam my band right there the, uh, the greatest band in the world and uh we'll we'll pop the rest of these lithops so shut up ox you talk too much bye bye All right, and so that's that. 73 lithops potted up into pots to go into the collection for breeding. Uh, that took a while. 
yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that took a while. And it's uh, it's cold out here now. And uh, my wife is ready for me to be done playing with lithops, helping take care of children. And uh, I need to clean up this area and go do that. But the project is complete. You got him on it. And that makes me very, very, very happy because I don't have to worry about them anymore other than, you know, in the collection. But yeah, real quick. Uh, let's take a look real quick. So yeah, that's what we got done. 73 lithops, bare root, potted up, and these little pots. My light ran out of battery power. Sorry about that, so I have no light anymore. But, uh, yeah, these guys are all going to come over here and uh, join, join the collective. All righty. Go back over here. Oh, my daughter sounds angry, and my wife is probably very ready for me to go in. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this has been entertaining as hell. Uh, I know for some people it will be. Some people will be like, dude, little stupid plants and buckets. But you know what? Those of us who know, we know. Anyway, uh, I'm tired. I'm going to go in. Uh, I got water all over me. I'm cold. But like I said, we're done. Uh, anyway, love you all very much. And I uh, hope all my uh, Lithops group friends are doing well uh all the people in the uh Messems and lithops subreddits uh the love lithops beginners and uh other groups that i belong to love lithops and uh conifidum Messems, and lithops i uh, hope everyone's doing well hope everyone's doing well anyway take care everybody this has been ox the gardener bye bye